Hello, 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 and welcome back to Alice Talks Football, and welcome back to a late afternoon live show. We do normally go live about two hours later than this, but I'm exhausted. I've got a busy day, and you know what? There's some really interesting news on Sesco and Manchester United's budget and summer plans that I want to get into and discuss with you guys. Also, a few other stories going about, but Bremer, Sesco, Evan Ferguson, particularly the names being mentioned today, Sesco in detail, and we've been speaking out about Sesco a lot lately. It's clear he's rated by the United Scouts. The question is, would Ashworth be for that? Well, apparently he was watching him at Newcastle. Who knows? So we're going to dive into all the news. We're going to dive into everything that's said. We've got some reports on the academy, Tenog's plans, Tenog's relationships with certain players. Really interesting report on Willie Kamwala. So we will cover that in today's show. So please do hit the like button. Of course, subscribe down below for new. I'm not sure if this is going to be a long live show because I've had one of those days where I keep falling asleep and I don't want to start falling asleep while live. But I recorded the video for the second channel fell asleep halfway through. It was falling asleep in this morning's video. I don't know if you've watched it. But at the end of this morning's video, my eyes are like, so we'll see what we could do, but we're going to jump right into the news. We got everybody in the chat, you know, in a positive mood today. I want to make it a positive live stream because I feel a lot of live streams lately have been negative. She, as she says positive, I just got an alert saying the Wi Fi is glitching. So please say that the Wi Fi is fine. Please say that the Wi Fi is fine because as soon as I say positive, your know, Wi Fi is playing up apparently as well big up everybody in the chat as well Cesc is going to be a scrap Arsenal Chelsea tune and others looking at it yeah 100% it's not going to be easy and particularly of us maybe not being in Europe next season it could be even more difficult big up Steve in the chat love Alice Punditry in a refreshing natural authentic style really appreciate it Steve um big up everybody that does follow the channel I said I've got a few of you commenting saying you like that I'm a little bit different where I sort of have little presentations on in the background and some of it's opinion based some of it's context based I always try to make 10 minute videos every day where it's just the news rounding up the news everything you need to know in 10 minutes and then live streams where we talk about the news but we elaborate it we bring in people's opinions it's it's, it's more opinion based and then in the morning we have news based so hope you all enjoy that kind of stuff but let's dive into the news let's dive into the information starting with the sesco story and when i say sesco story i mean there's a few sesco stories uh but it was said manchester united chelsea and arsenal are tracking benjamin sesco uh that was said by nazar kinsella now nazar kinsella has been pretty accurate with his information he was the first guy to say that uh, uh Ineos's first target will be elise and then within a, like a couple of days of him talking about Elise to United, it really heated up. He was sort of the first person to get those Elise to Man United stories heating up. And then all of a sudden you had Ornstein, Romano, other credible journalists coming out showing that United had an interest in Elise and that he's been pretty credible with his information. And I think he definitely has some kind of connection to someone in the Ineos camp Um and he is saying we are one of the clubs tracking Sesco. I also believe Newcastle are tracking Sesco as far as information I received, but he did not mention that. It's also been said by Ben Jacobs today that Evan Ferguson is being seriously discussed internally at Manchester United. And Benjamin Sesco as a 50 million release course is also a possibility. £43 million pounds for Benjamin Sesco, who's on monstrous form. So we've had two different journalists today stalk talk about uh, Benjamin Sesco elaborating on that he didn't just say that Man United Arsenal and Chelsea are tracking Sesco but he's saying he's got a 42.7 million release clause which is going to come active in the summer and that Sesco's representatives have been guests at both Chelsea and United matches this season they've been guests at matches and we know that United reached out to Sesco's representatives in the past we've had conversations with Sesco in the past we almost signed him two years ago but because of RB Salzburg relationship with RB Leipzig it was easier and less risky I guess because he was only 18 to make the move to Germany to further develop but maybe he's ready to make the next step the players reportedly open to the Premier League and meetings have gone by with Manchester United and of course, Chelsea, I think Chelsea's need for a striker could be higher than United's. And Chelsea, we know, will just pay ridiculous money to get a deal done. Uh, but it's a release clause, so we don't have to worry about Chelsea outbidding us. It's more about the player's preference, I think, in this case. Oh, my eyes are just blurred up. Ooh. Oh. Uh, it's more about the players preference in this place um, Anthony says Sesco under the right coaching and mentoring programme will be a monster his ceiling is quite high and he's much uh, is quite high and he's a much including an all-round Haaland. Sesco has lots of similarities to Hoyland, some similarities to Highland. he's he's tall, he's fast, he's physical, he's good in the transition, he's got that physical ability but I also think technically he's very very good he's, he's very good at creating for his teammates he can hold up play he can dribble I mean Sesco for me is an all-rounder we will talk 
about Sesco in a second as well. Some United fans will say Kim Min-jae isn't good this season because he's on the bench, but hands hands off for Kim and Jay too who clearly doesn't want to use one of you it's best and max and that is why he's in the thumbnail because even though there's no official links linking us to Kim and Jay it's just official links linking him to leaving Bayern Munich I do want to talk about Kim and Jay because I'm actually going to have a, a bit of a discussion about I think we should go for Kim and Jay um, especially if we get Deserby Kim and Jay is a Roberto Deserby S centre back as well if we do get Deserby and but even if we keep Tanag get Kim Min Jay Sesco reminds me of a young Eva a bit uh, if slightly less skilled. Yeah, 100%. Sesco is a top, top player. And I saw someone do this really good analysis on Sesco, really, really good analysis on Sesco. Because obviously I watched a little bit of Sesco, but I don't watch loads and loads of football outside the Premier League. But I've done, I've followed him a little bit from time to time, obviously with um, United being linked to him in the odd RB Leipzig game. But I saw a really good analysis on Sesco, which I think mentioned like similarities to Eber, but they compared Sesco to different strikers and said what he had been similar to each of the strikers. And it was a really, really good comparison. So I do find that I will bring that up in another video. But for me, Sesco would be up there as, as one of my first choice additions for Manchester United. He's, he's, he's an absolutely brilliant player. Now, we've been linked to Sesco a while. Oh, this is news that came out from Academy Scoop. He's been very accurate with their information, actually, as of late. Um, obviously with their academy information every time they say something like Forson's going to start Maynard's going to start uh, they, they seem to be spot on and they said this Manchester United retain an interest in Benjamin Sesco having come close to signing him two years ago as for Richard Romano confirms the club will invest in the forward this summer they said United's existing recruitment team believe the Sublinians versatility and age make him an ideal profile to support Hoyle and our concerns around United's de uh, depth in centre forward position it remains whether to be seen uh, if this will remain the case following Ineos's pend pending hierarchical restructure which will include comprehensive recruitment overhaul what we know about Sesco and I'm going to tell you this of what I know, of what's been said, of what's been reported. Um, but what we know about Benjamin Sesco to United is Manchester United scouts really rate Benjamin Sesco. Tenor really rates Benjamin Sesco. The people currently at Manchester United would want to bring Benjamin Sesco in, especially considering his form and his 43 million release clause. Ten Hag would want him, the scouts at United would want him. But obviously, Ashworth, Barada, Wilcox will have that say, and they've not been a place to have that say and confirm. Let's go for Sesco. Now, an interesting thing that's been said is that the Manchester United scouts feel neglected. They feel that they've been ignored. And a lot of the top scouts in recent years have left United because of lack of treatment. The scouts at United do not spend more than £30 million on Anthony. He's not worth more than £30 million. Suggested a name of really good wingers, including Elise, who had a £30 million release clause at the time. And they went, nah, we're going to go and get Anthony for £85 million. They made suggestions about this player and that player we should sign. They looked at alternatives to De Jong and we went at a different profile in Casemiro. You know, John Mercer, Richard Arnold, Woodward, whoever it is, has ignored the scouts. So the United scouts are frustrated and Jim Ratcliffe reportedly wants to change that and utilise the expertise of the scouts, but also have the Dan Ashworth, Omar Brana, Jason Wilkots having the final opinion. Should that be correct? And the scouts really rate Benjamin Sesco and Tenor really rate Benjamin Sesco. And Benjamin Sesco is the name that we've probably been linked to the most out of all the strikers, followed by Girassi, followed by Cirque, but Cirque is sort of heading more Juventus way. Benjamin Sesco is heading more Premier League way. Should that be the case, Dan Ashworth may be more inclined to listen to United Scouts than John Murta was because John Murta would just listen to Ten Hag, not the Scouts. And the Scouts are the experts who have scouted up, you know, Julian Alvarez, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Casado, some very, very talented players, Drew Bellingham when he was at Birmingham. For example, at least say Harry Kane, Declan Rice, all players they suggested. Maybe Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox know more broader as of what reports recently said will pay more attention and listen to United Scouts. And what we do know is, obviously, Ineos will have the final say on what happens with Sesco and if Sesco comes in here and Sesco comes in there and if we're going to spend four two million on Sesco, that will come down to Ashworth, Walcott, Barada. They will have the final say, but we know those currently in United like them. Will the representatives coming in like them as well? I'd assume so. Sesco is better than Gapo, absolutely, but I think it's different to compare them as well. Um, I think Gap I still think Gapo's a winger. I know I know he's not got the dribbling ability of Luis Diaz, but I think Gapo's a winger. The new set of forward should ideally be a contrast but complementary complementary to Hoyland. Otherwise, it becomes an it it inadvertible backup rather than addition to firepower. And I get 100 percent what you're saying, Yusuf. I do think all in all, Cirque would be my first choice because Cirque would have the ability to play with Hoyland behind Hoyland 
and Cirque can be more of a facilitator of our wingers and offer something a little bit different and has that bit more experience. But I also think with Sesco, because he's still developing, because he's still young, he doesn't mind rotating with Hoyland and not being the main man. He's only started 12 games for RB Leipzig this season. I think if you get an Ivan Tony, that causes an issue because one Ivan Tony apparently wants to demand 250k a week if he came to United, wants ridiculous wages. I like Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony's a ridiculous player. He's very, very good. But Ivan Tony, if he goes to United, will be demanding some of the most ridiculous wages. He's 29, has slight attitude. I do think players like Sesco and Cirque on lower wages who are younger, who aren't going to demand to start and aren't going to demand high wages, is probably what you want as a part of Hoyland. You bring Ivan Tony in, he's going to expect to start every game. He's going to expect to be on these massive wages. Hoyland gets shaped down. 72 million signing in Hoyland. We don't want to push him down. We want to get the best out of him. I believe that Hoyland will live up to his 64 million if you include the add-on 72 million price tag if we can get the best out of him. Do you get the best out of Hoyland bringing in Tony? Probably not. Could Sesco be healthy competition for Hoyland, but not someone that's going to create a problem? Um, I think so, because um, I think Hoyland's a good player. And I think for me, because I rate Hoyland so highly and I think Hoyland will be a really, really good player, I don't want United to be breaking the bank on a striker and 40 million, potentially the case of 42 million for Sesco is where I draw the line as well. Big up everybody in the chat. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new and all of that stuff. Uh, Continuing on, it was said, as it stands, Harry Maguire and Varane are two centre-backs that are most likely to leave United this summer, with Victor Lindelof likely to stay. And I do want to talk about a story that is coming out in a second as well. Uh, yeah, rest in peace to Angry Rant Man. He was the no passion, no aggression um, rant guy. That's really sad what happened because he's only 27. I don't know what happened, but I know that he was in surgery and that went wrong. So rest in peace to him. As well, we have to move quickly when the window opens. Sesco, otherwise, we'll be Kim and Jay 2.0 100%. And that's the frustrating thing as well. Man United didn't know if they were going to have the budget for a centre back. And because Manchester United didn't know if they were going to have the budget for a centre back in the summer, Kim and Jay, who would have chosen Man United over Bayern, then went to Bayern Munich because United were panicking because they didn't sell McGuire. Sesco is like Kim and Jay, 40 million pounds, lots of teams interested in him, great player. But if we don't act quick, he's gone. The release clause comes into place in June. Are we going to be ready in June? It's not in place in July. It's only in place in June. Manchester United wait to August to get most of their deals done. Not June. If any of us want to say we're different to the Glazers, we're not Glazernomics, I want to see Benjamin Sesco release call paid, or at least if you're not called Benjamin Sesco, it's because you're making advancements on Cirque or someone. I don't want to see Man United get to pre-season, not have a single signing, and then we go and get Kieran Drewsby Hall, another number eight that we're not going to get the best out of because we don't have the six profile to complement that, and another window where we ignore the six. For, Man for some reason, Man United go for attacking midfielders every single window and never defensive ones. We've got Mason out. We don't need Drewsby Hall. Let's go for a number six. That's what I want to see from Manchester United as well. Uh, Man United could get Gapo from Liverpool. I don't think Gapo is going to leave Liverpool for United. I don't think I want him anymore. I wanted him on my first thing to him, but I, he's not been. I mean, he's not been awful at Liverpool, but he's not been, you know, great. He's been very hit and miss as well. Alice between Elise and Nico Williams, which would be open to pick. I think Elise is the better player. But I think Nico Williams, in terms of what the way we play now, his injury record probably and his, his release calls could be better. I think for me, Nico Williams and Elise, I love them both. Based off this season, I'd have to go with uh, Nico Williams. Overall, I do think Elise is better. I'd probably maybe go Nico Williams because it would be 10 million cheaper and he's so direct. But I think Elise gives us a different profile winger at that would be better for final third retention because I think both our wingers are quite direct. I do think if you get like a Xerxes, though, that would really suit Garnacho and Rashford. I think one thing is that Rashford hasn't had that relationship with Hoyland that he had with Martial as well, um, which might sound like a weird thing to say, but that's just not been built up. Um, the price is right for Sesco also it has to be around 40 million range with other business to do 100%. And that is what we're going to dive into as well. Uh, good comments here. Sesco's ball, ca ball carrying, playing and hold up players excellent, though he still needs improvement in his striking and te technicalities, but overall awesome potential. 100%. Not the finished project yet, but you can see the potential there as well. This will be important summer. Need to prioritise correctly and bring in players to raise the floor of the squad. As you say, need to do it early too. 100% as well. Uh, someone said, um, we could get the Stugart striker. We are linked to Girassi and we will talk about him as well. What about both Eze and Elise? I think we get Elise. I think Elise, Crystal Palace have basically said he will probably leave. Um, so that brings me into other stories because I actually do want to talk about 
United's budget um, in relation to that. So we will get into this centre back story and the Bremer story in a second. But I wanted to get into I want to skip back quickly to get into this story here, which was about the budget. So the United Muppeteers are saying that United will have a budget of about 125 million net. Um, it depends on sort of sales. So if we have 125 million net spend and we make 100 million in sales, we've got 225 million budget. Now, United always claim their budget is less than it is. So when they're saying 125 million net, I think they'd be willing to push to 150, 200 million net. I reckon the budget would be around 150 million net. So taking that information on board, who, who could be sold? Casemiro could go to Saudi plus the wages. Sancho will likely be sold. McTominay, I don't know if he'll be sold, but I think there's money to get from McTominay. Greenwood will likely be sold. Donny could go on very cheap. Martial, Hammerback, Moran, Williams is just wages, millions a year in wages. Ericsson could go. Maguire could go. Anthony could go. Wamp could go. Mejbri, Alvaro, Pelistri could be going. Let's say we sell Sancho for 30 million and Greenwood for 30 million. That is 60 million. Let's say Saudi give us 30 million for Casemiro. That is 90 million there. We do actually sell McTominay. That's 120 million. And then all of a sudden, we get someone like Ericsson out, Donny out, and then all the wages we saved. Let's say Manchester United in a situation where we make 125 sales. I don't think we'll make 125 million for player sales. I think we can make 125 million for player sales, but I don't think we will because it's Man United. Um, I think we can, but I don't think we will because we're bad at selling. I think we could make 100 million from player sales maybe this summer. But if we have a 125 million budget and we make 125 million from player sales, that gives us 250 million to spend. And basing off the seven positions that United need to address and invest in this season, I'm sort of looking at who we're linked to. Todobo, 40 million. Sesco, 43 million. Both of them might come to like 81 million combined as you get a little bit of money off Todobo. Alise reportedly 50 million. Amadou Anana, who I think is a little bit overrated, if I'm going to be honest with you, but United seem really interested in him, could be 50 million. Get a left back for 15 to 20 million. Get someone like Lucimi from Bulgana as a second centre back because Bramford is ridiculously priced. And then get someone like Andre Fluminense as a second midfielder option. And you're looking at seven signings for around 253 million there. This is not FIFA. This is not realistic, 100%. But I'm saying the possibility is if Manchester United do sell, they could maybe have a good 250 million plus budget to spend this summer. And if they invest well, they could get seven signings. I mean, if Cirque really is £35 million as well, and told about you get for £35 million because you're a niche relationship, that's £70 million on two players. For Fana of Monaco, is £25 million. That's £95 million for three players as well. There are some real bargains in the market. You know, Tosin's going to be available on three. I think for me, two midfielders, two centre-backs, a right-winger striker and a left-back is what we need to address. I think we can get five signings. I don't realistically think we can get seven signings, but it's really important that we do sort out the midfield, we do sort out the defence, and we do get that winger and striker. And if we are going to get five signings in, one's got to be a DM, one's got to be a centre-back, one's got to be a full-back, one's got to be a striker, one's got to be a right-winger. But I do think it's not FIFA, but I do think it's realistic for United to have a £250 million budget that they could spend well on seven players, maybe six, because it's United, which could significantly improve the team. There's also players like Rabio that are going to, of course, be available on the on a free as well. You overvalue your players, the high wages reduce the value. Saudi already stopping with crazy buys, which is true. I, I've probably undervalued one or two, but probably overvalued a few more as well. Maguire, Scott, Wambasaka, Mason, Casemiro is basically 140 million right there, says Alex, and I agree. And I think if they play for Chelsea and they play for Manchester City, they get 150 million for them. I think because they're Manchester United players, we probably only get 100 million for them, which um, is just basically sums up the whole sort of state of affairs at Manchester United, to be honest as well. If we can't sign a doggy, then eight Nori is our alternative. Well, I don't think a doggy, Spurs would sell a doggy to us. Eight Nori is brilliant, but he's being quoted at 40, 50 million. And I think that's a little bit. I think sometimes you have to shop outside the Premier League because if you if Premier League club comes for another Premier League player, they, they put the prices up because Premier League brings in more money than the other leagues. The Premier League market instantly becomes a lot more expensive as well. Uh, we should get Bakayoko and Elise. Bakayoko is a good player. For me, Elise and Nico Williams are my first two choice wingers, but I do like Neto, bar injuries. I do like Bakayoko and I do like the Sule guy playing in Syria. I am a big fan of basically all those potential wing signings. So I'm very, like, I'm very open to other wingers as well. I think the wing market is really exciting at the moment. And I think considering Manchester United have got their right wing signing so wrong in recent years, I think this is an opportunity to really get it right. We also need to sign double what we sell, though, because we can't have another season without cover. Well, the only positive thing is 
not being in the Champions League, maybe missing out on Europe this season with Newcastle and Chelsea catching us up, at least could give Manchester United that leniency in, in the sense of, oh, we might not be in, have as many games next season and I don't think we'll get as many injuries next season. Um, well, hopefully we don't get as many injuries next season, but I tell you what, depth this season has been atrocious. We do need better squad depth, but I don't know if the injury crisis will be as bad next season. I just think this season's abnormally crazy injury prices. Um, big up. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Alice. I like how you end every every topic with as well. <laughs> Do I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, big up for the super chat. Just get a Jao Nevers. We need a seriously quality player like him and Mayno. I will go for Jao Nevers if he was affordable. But as I said, I think because I like Jao Nevers and I like Bramthwaite, but I've said this before, I think with Manchester United, because we need about six, seven signings. I don't think we can really afford to spend more than 60 million if we really like a player of one position. I think 50 million is sort of where we want to spend. We want those 40, 50, 55 million signings. I think we can't afford to stretch too much along the 60 million mark unless it's key. And I think Jal Nevers could be looking in, of course, the 80 million mark. Obviously, tweeted this the other day and I showed it in yesterday's live stream. But I said Manchester United realistically need two centre-backs, a DM, a centre-middle, a right-wing, a striker and a left-back. And I don't think they're in a possession to spend over £60 million on individual signings. Obviously, these are potential options that I like. Um, but I think while I like Jal Nevers, while I like Bramthwaite, it's a risk. I think if we sell really well, go out and get Jal Nevers. For me, if we've got Max Weaver and Jal Nevers, that would be my ideal midfield rebuild. If we can go out there and get some Max Weaver and Jal Nevers. But knowing United will get Drewsbury Hall and we won't even get the number six that we need. Um, I, I really don't trust United. If I, I'd be really disappointed if Ineos went and spent the money on Drewsby Hall. I don't, if we get a proper, proper number six, I don't mind getting Drewsby Hall. Do I want Drewsby Hall? Not particularly. Do I think he's a good player? Yes. Do I think he's a decent player? Yes. Do I think he can improve squad depth? Yes. But we don't need Drewsby Hall. We need a six. And I'd be very disappointed if Ineos went and got another number eight from the championship that they overspend on because it's English rather than getting an out-and-out. Number six, like I do generally like Drewsby Hall, but it's not what we need. We have to clear out. We generally need two centre mids, two centre backs, a nine, a full back and a winger, says Alex. I agree. So much to do. Super Mende or Varela, definitely good options out there. I was doing a video on what Liverpool need in their long term six. And I said Super Mende, Varela, who they could look at, Bruno Guimaraes, Mats Weifer. 100%. I mean, Subamendi is a player that's been linked heavily to Arsenal. I'm surprised we've not been linked to Subamendi much more at United, considering that I think we need a DM more than any anybody else in the league. And I know Subamendi can play more advanced box to box, but yeah. Uh, so underrated, uh, Robertson to Liverpool, sell Simicast to United. Don't want Simicast, but Robinson of Fulham is very underrated fullback. Everyone talks about Eight Nori, and Eight Nori is great. Robinson of Fulham. I think he's really, really impressed me. He's been really impressive this season. I'd be open to him at left back as well. Big up everybody. Eight likes away from 100 likes. Can we hit 100 likes? That would be brilliant as well. Scott Maguire, wan sold. We've been told away from Pong in. Only 40, 45 million net spend. Just need proper sales, says Alex. And I think Alex is right. Unfortunately, this is a bit like FIFA because while Manchester City could maybe get this done, I don't know if United could because we don't operate like that in the window. But this would be a big test of Ineos. You know, this would be ideal. These would be great replacements, great ways to move on. But just don't see United doing it. Don't see United doing it. Good players leave United and do well. Good players come here and flop. United is definitely part of the problem. I think we sometimes recruit players with the wrong attitude. So it's not completely our fault that they flop. And we recruit players that don't suit the way we want to play. Like we brought Mountain, we might bring Trusby Hall in and we might bring all these players that operate brilliant in the final third. Maino, Bruno, Mountain, Trusby Hall, really good in the final third. But if we don't bring in the six, we're not going to create the environment for those new signings to thrive. And then those signings don't do as well. We then sign big wage players with the wrong attitude. They've got egos, their problems at United. I think because of our recruitment being poor, because the environment at United being toxic and players being dragged down with that, because the team's not good enough and sustainable enough, the team starts playing badly. And then those individual players, because they haven't got the support of the team, start playing bad is a reason behind flops, but also comes down to the player itself as well. I think our lack of plan... A lack of strategy and recruitment is why we've had so many transfers that have flopped. That's the way I see it. If you, and that's why I think Dan Ashworth coming in is so important for Manchester United because we don't think about the transfer window as this is how we want to play. This is the signings we need to achieve. This style of play to unlock this player, this player, this player. Man United and transfer market have almost looked at individuals. We need a right winger. He's a good right winger. We need a DM. He's a good DM. We need a centre mid. He's a good centre mid. We don't look at the team, the players we have available, what's going to get the best out of those players and what's the system we want to play. And with Dan Ashworth coming in, with Man United are signing players, it's not going to be, Alisa's good, let's get Alisa because he's good and he's proven. It's going to be, 
you want to play this kind of football. These are the players you currently have. Does this player work with these players? And is this player able to play this way? That's what Dan Ashworth will be saying. And he'll be looking at who can do this, who can offer this as a winger, and looking at actually, is that the right profile for the club? And then making sure our recruitment has a bit more sustainability and strategy to it, that United are actually doing deals for the right kind of players. So I think you've got to look at it in that sort of sense of, but I think Dan Ashworth coming in will maybe help us be more organised in the chance to win with our approach because we sign players that are good, but they're not what the team needs. And we don't think about the long term project. Ten Arg said 16 signings. Ten of them were loans or over 30. So only six long term signings. Three of them have spent this whole season injured. So he's only really had three new players on top of the Man United side that finished seventh to impact the season. When you actually think about it. You, Man United team that finished seventh on the Ragnick and Ollie, only three new signings have consistently played this season that Ten Hag has made and he's brought through the youth, which is another reason why I'm a bit more generous to him based off performances this season as well. Chelsea left back for Dortmund, Matson's good. Yeah, Chelsea, I think he's got release calls, so he'll go to Dortmund 35 million. Chelsea, man, what was Chelsea doing? Cucurella's bang average. Chilwell's overrated. Their best left back is at Dortmund, Chelsea. That's ridiculous work from them. So I said, keep Wan-Bissaka. I'm not opposed to keeping Wan-Bissaka. Like, if Wan-Bissaka stays, I'm not going to be bothered. He's a good backup fullback. But I think if there's an opportunity to improve Wan-Bissaka and move on, then they probably would. Um, cash in on him. Over 360 watching, guys. Let's see if we can hit 200 likes. And do hit that like button if you have not already. Ahmad is a brilliant player in a position-based team. I think Ahmad as well, if we can play him more centrally in the half spaces, would be great. And what I like about Ahmad and why I want to see more of Ahmad Diallo is we have very direct players in the final third. Whenever we get the ball, we just want to run, take on players and we give the ball away a lot in the final third. We get the ball, we dart forward. We've got no teammates because we've darted forward ahead. Can't keep the ball in the final third. Ahmad gets the ball, dribbles, but then he'll hold up the ball for a bit, shield off the opponent, wait for players to catch him up and then play up, play off the ball. And Ahmad gives us better retention in the final third. Ahmad gives us a bit more control in the final third because he can hold up the ball and wait for individuals to catch up. While Ahmad isn't as direct and impactful as Rashford and Garnacho and doesn't, isn't going to dribble on 50 people and score this absolute world, but he's capable of doing that. And he's not an, an aggressive ball progressor like the other two wingers. He's not an aggressive ball carrier. He's a good passer. He's a good link-up player. He, he, he relies on patterns of play and the players around him. And I think Ahmad's profile, because we've got natural and Rashford's profile is very different. It's quite needed in this United squad to actually add a little bit of stability in that final third. Um, so I do hope that Manchester United really look to utilise Ahmad more. I don't think we've made the most, best out of it. Everyone's talking about Egri Fernandez as well. There's a lot of young players... People are talking about Ahmad is going to be brilliant in a possession-based team. Absolutely. I mean, Ahmad, Ahmad would be very good under Pep. Not sure if he'd get into City's lineup because you've got Foden and everyone. But Ahmad Diallo, I think, would be a very good player under Pep Guardiola as well. If we don't clear out, it's going to be an underwhelming summer anyway. We look at it. Ineos have to make proper sales. 100%. This summer, it's important that we sell. Ineos, if you want to make a statement, if you want to bring in the fans' trust, sell, sell, sell. Get some of that Deadwood out of this club. There's a lot of Deadwood in the club as well. Uh, yeah, um, the, there's plenty of players to sell even for reasonable fees. Yeah, that can reduce 100%. The thing is, we've got like 20 players that I think most fans would be open to selling. Some of those players will bring in more money than others. Some of those players are more priority to sell than others. But there's a good 20 players at United that could be sold as well. Uh, why, why so many players when we've got some really good quality ones going through? Because we need a mixture. We don't know. How, I think Harry Amas will be brilliant, but I think it's 17 to rely on him to be our left back. It's a bit of an ask. Did you see how the City players were running around for 120 minutes yesterday? We don't have the players that can do that. We don't. We don't, and I agree. I've said this about United, and this is why I have a bit of sympathy for Ten Hag. We don't have players with the physical and technical abilities to play like Man City. Technically, we don't have enough players that are good on the ball. You know, we've got Martinez that's good on the ball, Shaw that's good on the ball, Maynard that's good on the ball, Deleuze that's good on the ball, Hoyland. They're probably the only five technical players at United. And then off the ball, Hoyland's good, Garnacho's good, Bruno's good, Mount's good, Delo's all right. That's it off the ball. We only have very limited players who can physically do the demands of 10, ten on football on and then some off the ball. Mayno and Delo are probably the only, and Hoyland are probably the only three that can do it on and off the ball. And they're probably the three best players this season. Maybe can't actually to an extent. And if you look at the physical flooring of Man United squad, you, if you look at the physicality of the Premier League, the amount of running you've got to do, the intensity of the Premier League, and you look at Ericsson and Casemiro, 
and you compare that to a team that's had a similar season to us, like Tottenham. Now, Tottenham's season's been a lot better than us because they had lower expectations and they've played a lot better than us and Ange's done some good stuff and you can see what Ange's trying to do. So I'm not like completely comparing a season to Tottenham, but what I say is Tottenham have been quite open. Tottenham have been quite vulnerable to conceding. Um, do you know what I mean? But they, they've got results. If you look at sort of Tottenham in, the, in their midfield, they've got Basuma and Saar and their midfield's been a lot better than ours. Because Basuma and Saar off the ball, they can just cover so much ground, so much space. But even though Tottenham play that way, their midfield looks better in it. Whereas if we try and do that because we're trying to implement that way of giving space, Ericsson and Casemiro don't have the legs to compete with them. So it's a definitely, some of it can be down to Ten Hag's tactics, but I think like we don't have players that can cover the amount of ground needed. It's We, we really do lack that fitness in players as well. Mamba Saka doesn't get into any top half PL sides uh, sell and upgrade. If possible, I agree. Um, I don't mind keeping Mamba Saka as a backup option. I've, I've not got an issue if he stays, but I think if there's an offer there, I would sell and then I would upgrade. He wouldn't be in my top five players to offload, but I think he'd be in my top 10 players to offload as well. Does it make sense to talk about who we're going to buy and sell if we don't know who the manager's going to be? Well, I think the, way, the thing with Ineos is you've got to remember they want this head coach thing where Ineos sort of take over the recruitment side of things and they know how we want to play and they're going to buy to play the way we want to play. So while the manager will have a say, they can ultimately do a lot of work with, without the manager at Manchester United is sort of what's being suggested. Um, there is a lot of reports about Manchester United going in for Bremer and Manchester United selling Maguire and Varane and keeping Lindelof. Personally, I would sell Lindelof as well. Uh, but we can cover that um, in tomorrow's show if you want as well. Uh, we've been talking about Ahmed for ages. Uh, why isn't he not getting in the team? Tenog doesn't, just doesn't want to take that risk as well. Um, Man United is so physically unfit. We are, we are. We look exhausted, but we just we don't physically. We can't physically compete, which is worrying because that should be one of the basics. Best squads have technical players who also run. We don't have many players that can do either. As said, that is worrying as well. Must clear out first this time, create bigger budget and fill vac vacation positions with needs strengthening. 100%. When we sign and sell players this season, we need to make sure we're signing the right players. We need to make sure we're getting a massive amount of players out. We need players that are going to cover massive amounts of grounds. Michael says, stop sacking managers. I'm Tenog in. I don't want Tenog to be sacked. If any of sacked Tenog, I can understand it because the football's been atrocious and it, is, it has been awful under Tenog. But I think just because of the issues with the squad, the squad, the player power, I don't think sacking a manager makes much difference if you don't change anything else. Personally, myself, I wouldn't sack Tenog. I would I would give Tenog another season. But if things are looking really bad in December, that's when you can potentially pull the plug. But I'd like to see what Tenog does if he can get backed and actually backed properly this window um, and you have a good structure around him. I'd be really intrigued to see what Tenog can, can go out there and, and do 100% as well. United players lack stamina. 100%. We just, I know that Tenog's style of football is demanding and it's going to require us to cover a lot more ground than other systems would. And, and that can be difficult for the Manchester United players. But we definitely lack that fitness and, and, and as you mentioned, sort of stamina needed. We really, really do. We just look unfit. I know that Tenog's style is demanding and it maybe is making the players look worse and that other players would struggle. But we just lack that physical energy needed. To compete at the top as well. Um, what's someone saying here? Um, everybody in the chat, we need two centre backs and a Casemiro placement. Um, yeah, I agree. We need two centre backs, a Casemiro placement, arguably another midfielder, a right winger, a striker, a full bat. We need relaxed, we need players that can run off the ball and have the stamina. We need some physicality, we need some height in the midfield. We need people that are able to, you know, be, be press resistant, progress the ball as well. We need to sell full back to bring one in. Um, yeah, 100%. Apparently, Molassi is the one we're going to... One source says Molassi is the full back we're open to selling. Another source says it's Wan-Bissaka. I think with Molassi missing a whole season of football, it will probably be Wan-Bissaka that we let go. Um, and then maybe we bring in a right back that's capable of playing left back, potentially. I'm not sure. Do I expect Ericsson to leave? I do expect Ericsson to leave, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I think that he's sort of finished. His legs are gone. And 10 not even subbing him on now. Uh, I think his legs are gone as well. Would you swap uh, the Chelsea squad without the manager? No, I like our squad more than Chelsea squad. I would take Cole Palmer from Chelsea and I'd probably take Malo Gusto and I would take Matson if he was, wasn't out on loan. They improved the United squad. But other than those three, not many players at Chelsea improved the United squad. Maybe Enzo Fernandez, uh, not Enzo Fernandez, Moises Casado. I think Moises Casado has not been as awful as people make out. If he was a 40 million signing, he wouldn't look bad. I think it's because his 100 million signings look worse as well. No market for Malassia right now after missing a tie season, says Alex. And I agree, I think Malassia... 
I don't think we'll sell Malassia, despite reports that we want to and that apparently uh, Jim Ratcliffe's trying to sell Malassia. I don't think we will. But listen, people, this was only meant to be a little short catch up live stream. Uh, please do hit the like button on the way out. And of course, subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football if you're new. I might be back tonight with a bonus video if any news comes out or a live stream if anything interesting happens. So do subscribe for that. If not, I'll be back tomorrow with a short news roundup. See you then. Bye.